Can you believe the cost of a chicken breast these days? You know, I'm thinking at these prices, maybe we should consider invading another country. Now, while convenience is king in today's busy world, convenience and great food rarely mix. So today, we're gonna share some techniques that'll help you on your way to a fresher, more affordable chicken. I'm Derek Allen, and this is Burnt Fat. You know, most people don't realize that great ingredients and hence great food really just comes down to balancing three things. First up is cost. If you buy a chicken already cut up into pieces or prefabricated in the supermarket, you're paying for them to actually do that. Whereas if you buy a chicken and fabricate it yourself at home, it's gonna be so much cheaper. Second is quality. Of course, the more something's processed, the less fresh it's going to be. Whereas if you fabricate the chicken yourself at home, you have total control, it's gonna be a much fresher product. And third is time. Of course, it's so much quicker just to run to the supermarket and buy the chicken already cut up. But you know what? We're gonna show you some tips and, and ways to fabricate the chicken at home. It's gonna be so quick, so easy. You're gonna be able to do it in your sleep. Okay, so let's get started. First step, we need a chicken. Now, when you bring your chicken home, make sure you get it in the refrigerator right away. Basically, with chicken, as with all poultry, you wanna make sure that you keep it cold, out of the temperature danger zone, so you don't risk any foodborne illness, such as salmonella, all that bad, bad stuff. So, when you are ready to fabricate, just basically take it out of the refrigerator, take it out of its wrapper, paper, plastic, whatever it was wrapped in, and then you need to rinse it. You're gonna to wanna to rinse it with cold water. Again, keeping it cold to keep it out of the temperature danger zone. Rinse it, pat it dry with some paper towels, and then you're ready to cut it up. Now, before we cut it up, I just kind of want to explain the anatomy of the chicken, because I think my mom might have cooked one upside down before, and I was even a little confused when I started cooking. All right, so here we go. Think of it like this. Here's the drumsticks, here's the wings, and it walks like this. The drumsticks walk it forward, and the wings are on the back. So here, that's where you have the breast area. The wings are on the back. This is your neck cavity right there. Back here, we had a little butt. All right, so that's kind of like shows you where you need to aim when you're going to cut up the chicken. And for that, we're gonna need some knives. Now, I have a chef's knife and a paring knife. The one thing with these, you wanna make sure you have a really, really sharp knife. That's for safety. It may seem like an oxymoron, a sharp knife for safety, but think about it. If you have a dull knife and you go to make a cut, that's where you really risk slipping and cutting yourself. With a sharp knife, go to make a cut, it's gonna be a nice, precise cut, and you won't cut yourself, I promise. First thing when fabricating is you want to make sure that the breast side is facing up. And then we need to think about stability. We want to stabilize the bird or flatten it out, which will make it safer to cut into. And to do that, we just need to pop the hip bones. It sounds barbaric, I know, but the stability will make it safer for us to cut into the chicken. Now, to stabilize a bird, just pay attention to these natural seam lines or these fat lines. They'll tell you where to cut. So just cut down the seam lines. And then pop the bones and now the chicken is much more stable and much safer to cut into. It's best to start with a breast. First, find the keel bone or the center bone and cut down that to expose the meat. Cut as close to the bone as possible. And then while cutting, just use your fingers to peel the meat away. Now once you get down to the bottom, you just want to wiggle the wing joint, and this will tell you where to cut through. Just using your chef's knife for heft, cut through that knuckle, and you have your chicken breast. Of course, you want to remove the wing bone. Be sure to save this for chicken wings later on. This piece here, that's the tenderloin. You can save that for chicken fingers. And then you're left with your chicken breast. Now, if you'd like, you can leave the skin on, but if you want a skinless chicken breast, just peel the skin away. Then you're left with a boneless, skinless chicken breast. And then moving on to the leg and thigh piece. First up, you wanna locate the little butt piece, and then just start to cut in along the bone. Cut along the bone, again, staying as close to the bone as possible, and peel the meat away with your fingers. Now you're gonna to come to the knuckle which connects the thigh piece to the carcass. Expose that and then just cut underneath. And then you're left with your leg and thigh combination. Repeat that on the other side. And then you're left with the carcass itself. Be sure to save this for stock. Now if you'd like, you can leave the leg and thigh as a combination piece, or you can also separate the two. 
To do that again, just pay attention to the natural seam line, this fat line right there, that'll tell you where to cut. Again, using your chef's knife for heft, just cut down the fat line. Expose the knuckle, cut through, and you have your leg piece and your thigh piece. So we've cut up the chicken, and if you're gonna cook it right away, you can just put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to cook it and just take it out. Sometimes though, it's a really good idea to go to the supermarket and get like three or four chickens and fabricate them all together. Now all those pieces you're gonna to wanna to freeze, but if you put them in a freezer bag in the freezer, they're gonna freeze all together and you're just gonna have one big frozen clump. And say you need one breast or two breasts, you're gonna to have to defrost that whole thing. Think about how you buy it in the supermarket though. When you buy a bag of frozen chicken pieces, they're all individually frozen. And that's a commercial process called individually quick frozen. Um, but they have these crazy super freezers that do it really, really quickly. But you know what? You can actually do a very similar process at home. Just line a cookie sheet with wax paper and lay the chicken pieces out, making sure that they aren't touching. Then cover with plastic wrap and place in the freezer until the chicken pieces are completely frozen through. Once they're frozen, just peel and remove the chicken pieces from the cookie sheet. Place them into a Ziploc freezer bag, and you're good to go. You know, I hope we've shown you today that it doesn't take that much more time or effort to save some money and increase quality. And you know what, by having your hands on, you're gonna get such a better appreciation of what you're cooking. All right, folks, as always, eat, experiment, enjoy your time in the kitchen, and have fun. I'm Derek Allen, and this is Burnt Fat. So we've cut up the chicken, and <laughs> what's going on? So it walks like this. Mmm, it's so fresh. <laughs> walks like this, flaps like this. My mouth feels tight right now, that's why. The wings flap in the back and it walks like this. Okay. <laughs> you wanna make sure that, I'll try that again. Sure. And there's the tail, the little butt area. They have these big crazy freezers that freeze really, really quickly. I'm gonna start over again because I was all over the place throughout the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, these things. They're big things. <laughs>